Hi everyone, I uh, hope you had a really great festive season. So let's get in and watch this prototype video that you're released in the last Kickstarter campaign update. And I'll walk through and give you the extra information that I have. The first very obvious change is to this angular design. Uh, it's somewhat reminiscent of a Cybertruck. This gives a lot of benefits. So easier to manufacture, which means faster to manufacture, increased reliability and repeatability. These straight edge bends, there's algorithms that have been around for, for ages about how to do the bend because you need to bend a little bit further. And then when you remove the bend mechanism, the metal will flex back slightly. So you want to overbend and then it'll come back to the right angle. This is just like bend, 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 and the piece is done. Whereas previously it was a like really laborious method of rolling the metal to get a rounded edge and very hard to do that with a high level of repeatability. And now the, um, the unit will ship in two, two boxes. So it'll be a box for the pitch and the roll will be pre-assembled and then another box with the bottom platform and the 2D platform. That means that you'll get the maximum range of pitch possible without having to add a platform or anything. You could still add a platform if you wanted to, but at least now it'll be there for everyone. And depending on whether or not you've ordered rotation, so 3DOF, there'll be the mechanism inside this bottom platform for the rotation. Otherwise it'll be a locked platform because uh, it still needs to pass power through. And there will most likely be uh, a buyback program in place if someone has bought a 2DOF and wants to upgrade to a 3DOF. Um, they will be able to make use of that buyback program to send back their original. I'm not sure if it's the whole unit or just the base parts, but it'll be send back the relevant parts and <clears throat> you'll be shipped out a 3DOF unit. Uh, coming back to the Cybertruck like with the angular approach, now the pitch unit has become an exoskeleton design where the, I guess, the fascia is the structure. This is really good because it reduces the amount of materials required. Um, and what we can see here is this is where the AC ports will be for plugging in peripherals that require AC. Um, I had suggested to Zolt that maybe they'll only want a single port for, you know, cost savings. And then the user could plug in their own um, outlet board. So it'd be really great to hear in the comments if you think there should still be two or whether you'd be happy with one and plugging in an outlet board, which will give you flexibility for as many things as you like. What we can see here is this cutout here. This is where the Raspberry Pi USB ports will be available for plugging in your peripherals. Uh, another part reduction is they've removed the USB hub that was previously routed however it was routed going through the slip ring which was not as reliable as hoped for and now we'll be using virtual here to route that data for USB over Wi-Fi. The drive system has been changed to timing belts so this is the pitch drive belt here goes down routes over the timing gears inside the base and this will make the unit far quieter um, as we can see later in the video i'll link the actual video in the show notes so that you can go and listen for yourself but basically belt here there will be a belt underneath for doing rotation and you can see the edge of the belt over here if you can see my mouse pointer that goes around under the roll all three axis will have belt drive belt drive and then belt in the base and you'll see here movement using the belt drive smooth it should have less backlash than the geared system because the timing belts are always like locked in place the main outshoot of the belt drive is more precise and quieter uh, what we can also see here is a good representation of what the overall height will be if we look at the dimensions comparing it to the previous year two revisions there's been about a 40 millimeter height reduction. One of the places we can see this is the rotation platform at the base down here has reduced from 16 to about six centimeters high. I have this verified from your, your VR, but I also calculated based on the IEC plug in my photo editing software and measured it out. The TUDOF base is higher than the previous revisions TUDOF base. So although 
it looks like it may be overall shorter. It is actually fairly close to the same. For most of this video, the seat is at a 45 degree angle, which confuses the perspective even more so in a minute. Uh, I'll point that out. What you, what you can see here is this little lip that lifts up over here. And there is another platform that slides in and will lock into place here that has the seat plate on top of it. I'm estimating from this 30 to 40 millimeters higher. The overall reduction in the seat height position is about 40 millimeters. I'll just refer to this image. Uh, I'll give credit to Heger from the Discord who made this image. Uh, I tried to reach out and get per permission to use it. So hopefully he's fine with that. But what we can see here is that on a three DOF yaw two with the pitch all the way forward, the footrest is approximately 10 to 12 centimeters off the ground. So losing four of that, we're still going to be six centimeters off the ground. There's been no loss of motion range in any axis. That's what you want. You don't want to lose any. If anything, you would want more. Here's the really confusing perspective part of the video where either this guy looks like a giant, but I think it's mostly because the pitch unit is back at a 45 degree angle. So we're losing quite a bit of visible height. But anyway, this is a one-to-one -one scale unit. The dimensions for the width and the depth of the base platforms hasn't changed, but probably looks smaller because of these angular corners now. The pitch unit itself, the distance from this edge to, to this edge here is probably slightly smaller because now we have this lip uh, on the outside with the rail for the, the wheels to hold it in place. While we've got this image here, I'll explain how the wheels all work. So you can see on the roll unit, we have additional wheels now that weren't in the previous revision that uh, stop this from, from moving front to back. And I assume there's wheels behind this as well. And then this section here is a wheel that is rolling against this lip sticking out, which keeps it held down. But also additionally in both the roll and the pitch axis, the belt system also holds the roll platform and the pitch platform down. Down here, we can see these two little bits sticking up and that's wheels pushing uh, laterally in from the sides, pushing medially to the center. And that stops the pitch unit moving side to side as it's rotating, which was a problem for some of us on the previous revision where it could scratch the powder coat. When you listen to, to this video yourself, if you decide to, um, you have to bear in mind that there's no internal electronics at the moment. Um, there's no powder coating. There's no seat in place. I think most of these things will actually reduce the noise even further. Um, but a key point here is we have lower parts count and simplified electronics. So let me go through that with the knowledge I have and some inference. From the base, we have our AC power going in and there'll be a slip ring for a three DOF unit, there'll be a slip ring going up into the two DOF base, and that's only passing the AC power. Inside the two DOF base, we have a 24 volt power supply. So we have a reduction from two power supplies down to one. Previously, the rotation unit also had a 24 volt power supply. I assume in a two DOF unit that they won't need the slip ring because they can just pass the wires, they won't be spinning. So that'll be even another reduction. Inside the two DOF unit, we have a power supply. We have two motors, one for rotation and one for pitch movement. The rotation is at the front side. The pitch is sort of more towards the back. And then there'll be large belt wheels for rotation and a small pulley on the motor. Then the belt just goes through a pulley system onto the timing gear and back out and connect it to each side of the pitch. Uh, we can actually see the motor of the roll unit here. Again, Belt goes in over a roller, goes around the timing pulley, comes up over a roller. So it's held close to the mechanism. Same for the pitch. Those rollers are to hold the belt close and help keep it tight and held down. Then electronics wise, we have only one custom PC board. The same custom PC board used twice, which is awesome because if they have a problem, they just ship out the same part. There's much less back and forth trying to figure out which part it is. Onto that board can plug on Arduinos, which are standard off the shelf components, a Raspberry Pi, at least in the top unit, I believe. And then also off the shelf motor controllers. That means that the components that may 
fault out at some stage are the parts that are off the shelf and very easy to replace. I would imagine that the custom PC board doesn't have a huge amount of electronics on it. Zoltz told me that he believes that when you plug an Arduino, if you plug a new Arduino in, it will automatically get programmed, which is awesome. So yeah, like a huge reduction in electronic components, um, an absolutely massive reduction in custom PC boards from seven down to one, which is really amazing. Also a reduction in interconnects. So the cabling between the base and the, the pitch should only be... Uh, some 240 volt power, some 24 volt power. The custom board will, I imagine, have the drop down to five volts that's required for a Raspberry Pi and Arduino. So yeah, like a huge reduction there. It's significantly lighter, which is absolutely freaking awesome. Zolt told me that he can quite easily lift this. It doesn't have all of the parts in it, but the majority of the weight of the parts is the, the yaw itself and the motors. This by and large has most of the weight that is expected to have. This has a benefit in a lowered cost for shipping, plus also moving down to two boxes for shipping um, and having it pre-assembled does also reduce the costs of shipping as well. So that's that's a big plus, great work. Going back to the range of motion, one of the things that Salt told me that they're trying to work on at the moment is the ability to tilt the seat forward or back as a sort of a fixed tilt. What that will allow you to do, and this is really awesome as well, is that already the yaw moves back quite a lot, like pitches back quite a lot, and some people don't even want it to pitch back that far. Through using the seat tilt, you can sacrifice some of that reverse tilt to increase the forward tilt. We know we're going to have about six centimeters of potential forward movement based on the foot holder, uh, but one extra thing, is the foot holder as shown in Heger's pictures was probably out a fair way. What we can see here is this slot underneath the roll unit. What that means now is that with that slot, we'll be able to move the footrest in back further towards the back of the yaw. So for shorter people, for making it take up less space if you wanna pack it away for a little while, we're getting a much greater range of the opposite of extension, uh, retention. <laughs> For the footrest which is another really great addition let me show the images here that are renders we will have design legs again which may do make it look a little bit better here's the seat plate and tubing in place so we can see here we've got quite robust metal tubing to support that seat plate i'm sure hegger will be happy about that he knows what i mean also that gives you that extra extension of height from what you could obviously see in the video previously we'll have some lights here this plate may end up being plastic i've asked that result check this because now with the yaw connecting wirelessly only i think there's a chance that we might get better wi-fi signal if this plate here is not metal he's assured me that we'll be testing that some other questions that people had were about will there be a path for backers who have your v2 to upgrade to the rev3 i don't know that's for your VR to enter. If you're really interested in that, please leave it in the comments and I'll point them to that. What version of Raspberry Pi? So it will be Raspberry Pi 4 as per the previous your two revisions. There may be, you know, just a rebuild of the software to make it work on a Pi 5. There's no fundamental issue stopping that. And there is interest in the potential increase in bandwidth throughput for that because the Pi 5 has Wi-Fi 6. So I'm quite interested in that. Also because that would mean that the USB bandwidth via virtual here would be higher. And that may, I don't know, it would need testing, unlock the ability to run uh, like a quest with wired video via virtual here, which apparently is possible if you have enough throughput. How long until they're in production? The current expectation is that there'll be a fully built out prototype by the end of January. They're tracking quite well on the build time for that. So where things are at, they're pretty confident that that will happen. The main steps until starting shipping out to end users is end user testing. So not your staff testing. And once the feedback from that comes back all clear, then they will start shipping out to both uh, Kickstarter backers and uh, retail customers. I, I would expect that that would be maybe March at the latest if they start shipping out units for end user testing in late January or early February. 
colors availability. I, I did suggest that they may want to reduce the amount of color options initially to simplify production. There's no real negative for offering multiple colors. It's quite easy in the way the process works for them. There may be one or two less colors than were previously offered. And also in the future, there will be the option to go for a like two pack car paint process. If you wanted to get, uh, th this may have additional costs or probably will. Uh, but if you wanted to ha have say metallic paint, or I would love to do like chameleon paint, like some cars have, whereas as you turn it around, the colors change. I think that would look amazing, but that's down the road. So yeah, uh, I'd really love to hear any comments on key things would be one or two AC plugs, Pi 4 versus Pi 5, bearing in mind that there's no, no issues with the Pi 4 and adding a Pi 5 would likely increase the costs because Pi 5s are more expensive. Would you be willing to pay more um, or would you be willing to pay something for an upgrade to a Pi 5? I don't know that's an option. I'm just saying it's a potential way to do it. I would, I would potentially replace my Pi 4 with a Pi 5 that I purchased myself, if it was possible in the software, that would be something I would like to see personally, but we'll see. Anyway, I think this is great stuff to see. It's really great to see this prototype at this level of production. I thought that their estimated schedule of January was really, really um, optimistic, but you know, it's, it's going quite well so far. So let us know what you think, leave, leave comments, uh, subscribe. See you soon.